Hello everyone, welcome to Minzy Crafts. I am Minna and I am your host on this channel. This is my knitting vlog and this vlog comes to you from my knitting nook behind me from the northeast of England. If you like watching my videos, like and subscribe and you can now also follow me on Instagram where I post about the, my knitting updates and also our dog walks. And as usual, I am not sponsored by any of the brands that I'm going to be talking about here. I've been really busy at my daytime job lately, so I don't really have a lot of updates to share with you. But in today's episode 7, I'm going to show you and share my experience using my sock blocker uh, for the first time. Uh, and if you're interested uh, into more detail about uh, how I got, uh, got hold of these sock blockers, uh, watch my episode 6 for more information on the... Uh, uh, sock yarn that I'm using here and the sock blockers as well. I have so far only blocked the first sock. Uh, the second sock is still on the needles uh, as you can see. Uh, but I wanted to do this uh, um, kind of separately anyways because I wanted to compare uh, the blocked sock versus uh, the non-blocked sock. And I also wanted to see how the um, damp sock put it on a wooden blocker would impact the actual uh, tool itself uh, compared to the one that I haven't used yet. So let's have a look. So first of all uh, what I did I um, was actually in a little bit of a hurry when I uh, blocked the sock so I uh, only this time I uh, just wetted the sock then I uh, gently squeezed excess water out of it by hands first and then I gently squeezed re remaining uh, water I could get out with um, uh, putting this in the middle of a towel and uh, wrapping it and then pressing. Um, then I put it uh, put the sock on the, on the sock blocker and I left it to air dry. It took about from noon till uh, following morning for this to air dry. Now I do live in uh, kind of a, it was a humid day and uh, in general it's uh, uh, kind of humid here in uh, in England. First of all it does look very nice when it's on the on this blocker so it's quite presentable as uh, as is and uh, we'll uh, let's take this off and let's have a look at the sock blocker itself now at this point. So uh, this one is the one that I have not used that yet and this one is the one that I have used and uh, to be honest after a single use I can't see any difference here um, yet and uh, this might be something that I will have to kind of observe how they behave over time but uh, I can't see like any kind of water damage uh, at this point that is uh, that's very good. I'm very happy with this. I've taken uh, the sock uh, off now. So I like to knit very long uh, cuffs on my socks. I like that my calves uh, stay warm uh, in the winter especially. And now because the sock blocker itself has this uh, shape here, so it's gotten this little divot here, uh, that's fine. And otherwise, I do think this looks very nice. So if you're going to give the a pair of socks to someone. I am totally on board now with blocking your socks on these things and uh, gifting them like this. This looks very uh, nice and professional. So shame on me for not using this before. <laughs> and, uh, let's just throw, I know that this is still on, uh, on the needles, but uh, uh, to uh, compare these, uh, if you can see that. So the other one is much smoother looking and the other one is just a little uh, crumpled up. But it looks uh, looks very nice, blocked. Uh, definitely go for that if you have the option. The style of heel that I do on my socks usually, uh, this is my go-to style of heel, is uh, flap and gusset. You uh, uh, pick some uh, uh, stitches, like two uh, needles worth of uh, stitches on your uh, for your uh, heel flap, and then you knit uh, about the same number of uh, rows as you have on. Uh, on the needles and uh, and then you do the creases in the middle here kind of and uh, it uh, gives you the gusset style then and uh, uh, that's uh, what I usually it's uh, I find it very simple I've knitted uh, quite a few socks so it's uh, uh, just easy for me to do on the go as socks are my uh, favorite uh, on the go uh, project to bring along. This one, the first sock, I got really lucky. I I really like how this transition happens here. Due to the variegated style of the Saberbolt crazy yarn, 
after I had knitted the uh, the heel, um, it uh, had changed into this kind of a light color that you can see here at the at the bottom of the heel. And uh, so when I started knitting in the round again, it uh, just changed very very uh, quickly and drastically. So there was no like a transition at all. And uh, after knitting maybe like ten rows, I just realized that I don't fancy this at all, that it just doesn't look pretty to my eyes. I'm not usually too picky about these kinds of things, but the, this time it just like really uh, bothered me. So I decided to rip the what I had done, go back to the heel and uh, find a darker spot on the, on the yarn. And so this is what I found. So these are socks for myself. I think I've said before also is that I use uh, uh, wool knitted socks uh, year round because it's just always so cold in here. Moving on to other updates. Like I said previously, I've been really super busy at my daytime job, so I've not had a lot of time to knit much. Starting with my um, Citroen shawl by Nitty. Um, and I am now in the fourth uh, pattern repeat, and I have changed to a longer. Um, circular needle as well and uh, uh, and I'm just loving how this turns out. I can't wait for this to be uh, finished and blocked and uh, uh, and I can get these little ruffled areas like really showing uh, beautifully and uh, I do think I'm going to have to uh, increase the size of it a little bit but uh, uh, luckily, uh, the pattern gives you the the repeat, um, how to repeat the increase repeats are done. So that uh, should be fairly easy then. Uh, now, I think I when I introduced this uh, proje project to you last time, so the pattern I have is a free pattern and it's uh, for a smaller shawl. Now, I found on Ravelry there is also um, a pattern for a bigger shawl. Uh, so all the increases have already been counted for you. And um, uh, but that one uh, uh, you have to pay for, and uh, uh, I don't remember right now how much that was, but um, uh, I'll I'll link it in uh, in uh, uh, space below. And uh, also because I think I found this pattern um, a number of years ago, so uh, at that point I only found the free pattern. So. Uh, but it's fine. I'll I'll be counting the stitches. By the way, this <laughs> is uh, truly truly magnificent in terms of uh, uh, number of stitches you have to count. I uh, like to keep these kinds of little markers here, so I put them at the space of fifty stitches roughly, and uh, then it uh, it makes it a lot easier to keep track of the um, the stitches and the counting. My third project that is ongoing is uh, this King Cole uh, chunky sweater that I'm knitting with the King Cole uh, uh, chunky uh, yarn, tweed yarn. And um, uh, I, so I finished the front, uh, if you remember from previous episodes. Uh, so here is the front. And again, just look how pretty that is. Uh, the tweed is just so pretty. And uh, I have cast on uh, the back. I've only knitted the ribbing and I need to start on the body. Uh, but there's some, I need to do some uh, reading of the pattern because something is needs to happen next. So I've just not had the time and energy for that either. So uh, here we are at, but hopefully I will be continuing on with this, uh, uh, um, uh, this coming week. And uh, I also, when I did the cast on, I used the Chinese waitress cast on. And uh, it uh, turned out again. I think it's it's a quite a nice uh, cast on style. I think now that I've used it a few times. In other news, so I am quite uh, fortunate to live in a lovely little village here, and I've learned to know some of the people. There is someone uh, within the village that's a friend of ours, and uh, they uh, know someone else who was into crafting. And uh, this lady, she used to dye yarn and um, sell it online, but she had to close down her shop, but she still has some yarn left over. So I was uh, just a few days ago invited to a yarn party. It was kind of like a yarn Tupperware party. And here, if you see, look at this picture, it was uh, just unbelievable. So much yarn and uh, uh, 
uh, so beautiful. So she was selling her stock and uh, uh, obviously on a, a little bit of a discounted prices. I found the following discoveries. So let us uh, look at my yarn haul from this um, yarn party. And uh, I admit, I think I went a little bit overboard and I'm probably gonna have to live a thousand years old to be able to knit all my stash. First of all, I got uh, some sock yarns. These are the sock yarns uh, that I got. And here, I quite like these earthy tones on this one. So these are uh, Super Wuss Merino 75% and 25% uh, uh, the nylon, except for this one, if you can see there is some sparkle in it. These I think I'm all going to use for uh, making socks. Um, uh, this one I got for the thought that I will need socks for my husband. And uh, these ones uh, uh, would be socks for myself, but I may change my mind still, uh, you never know. Uh, I try when I go yarn shopping uh, these days, um, I try to have a plan for the yarn that I buy so that uh, it doesn't just end up sitting there like I may have some uh, yarn like that. But I still try to, uh, I, I've been quite diligent since the pandemic about um, knitting away. So my stash busting has been has suffer, suffered quite the setback here. These are four ply or fingering weight. Then I got this uh, very beautiful uh, blue turquoise colored uh, DK yarn. This is 100% uh, super, super wash uh, merino. And this one I have a pattern for a hat uh, that I was thinking I will make a hat for from this for myself. Then I got this lace yarn. So this is also 100% uh, superwash uh, merino. Um, this is lace weight, so it uh, means there's quite a bit of it, um, like uh, about 800 meters. And this one I am going to look for a, um, a shawl pattern uh, to make. I really like shawls as well. I'm definitely a shawl person. Then what else we found? I got two skeins of um, iron weight yarn or worsted weight. I just recently I was browsing on Ravelry. I found a, a few uh, very nice uh, iron weight hat patterns uh, for a single skein. I'm thinking about uh, using these for hats again. I was thinking I will use this uh, green uh, blue um, to make a hat for my husband. And uh, uh, then I'll use this uh, purple, uh, red, pink uh, for a hat for myself. I have a whole bunch of projects on my mind that I have already kind of queued up and I try to... Um, I am very diligent about being... Uh, um, following my plans. These yarns might, might end up sitting in my stash for a while. My husband, who was also at this uh, uh, yarn party, but not quite as interested in the yarn as I was, so he then pointed out these... Um, mini skeins and he was saying that he would like to uh, so these are kind of like a burgundy sort of like red wineish uh, color so he he mentioned that he would like to have knitted um, uh, fingerless gloves this is um, fingering weight or four ply yarn there's what five of these it, it should definitely be enough the lady who was selling the yarn did a really good job uh, uh, pushing the yarn as well so I got this kind of a uh, um, pre-knitted um, yarn that you can just uh, knit directly from uh, from here but I'll, I'm thinking I'll probably wind it into a ball so uh, I she said that this is like kind of like the leftover color from these and it is quite pretty as well so this would make a very nice uh, complimentary hat for uh, for these uh, gloves then Finally, this is the final thing I have here. I got these uh, mini skeins. I was thinking making these into kind of like a, a fade fade set um, scarf, and somehow it is also like I, I think Christmas because probably because of this uh, red one here. So I will have to uh, do this for Christmas then I think. So I feel very uh, grateful and privileged to have been invited to this yarn party and uh, while I did go overboard it was a very fun uh, event with the 
with friends and uh, I met new people as well so I'm I'm very happy about that and uh, now that this is uh, winding down here I would like to thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed this I hope this also can inspire other people into knitting or crafting or anything kind of creative until next time thank you